Spicy family. I hope and pray that you are doing exceedingly well today. Well, I am stopping in today because I had an awesome conversation while I was shopping last night with this young lady who is on her natural hair journey. It, it just started clicking in my head after she and I were talking that, you know what, maybe I should do a video for you all to share a little bit about what I feel are some of the top things that can help you on your natural hair journey if you are starting the journey or even if you're in the midst of the journey and having some difficulties and even if you have gotten past learning what to do for your hair sometimes you need a little bit of reminder about things so that you can stay on that path of being on the natural hair journey I actually have five tips that I'd like to share that have helped me in my I want to say it's seven years May 29th I think it is of this year that I have been 100% natural. And if you'd like to learn more about my natural hair journey, leave your comments below and I'll be more than happy to share my natural hair journey with you. I have five tips and the first tip that I think is exceedingly important and probably the most important as you go through this journey is don't make having natural hair harder than it has to be. I think that we put so much emphasis on natural hair products, natural hair this. We put a lot of emphasis on protective styling. We put a lot of emphasis on so many different things that make the journey harder than it really has to be. And if you could step back for a moment and really think about the real reasons why you decided to go natural in the first place, I think it would make it so much easier to go through the process of transitioning if you decide to do the big chop or if you've gotten past that and you're in that growth stage or maybe you've gotten to the place where there's no longer any desire for growth and now it's just in the maintenance stage and I think once you get to that stage you've kind of released a lot of that stuff anyway but it can be still a little bit frustrating because our hair has a mind of its own a lot of times and going through what's going on with your hair, trying to fix if any if any issues that your hair may be giving you can make it very, very frustrating, especially when you are overthinking the process of being on this journey. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be liberating. It's supposed to be educational. It's supposed to be a beautiful experience in learning your hair and seeing the beautiful hair that grows out of your scalp because of the work that you put into it. So if you can get back to that real reason why you made, you decided to start this journey, and that reason could be numerous. I know for me, the reason I started the natural hair journey is because my hair was shedding and I couldn't understand why my hair was shedding. And of course the hairdresser kept saying, your hair is so healthy, your hair is so healthy. But let's do a protein treatment. That should help the shedding. But you just told me my hair is healthy, so why do I need a protein treatment? So I just started thinking about little things like that and just decided, you know what? Let me see what my hair looks like natural. I've never worn it natural since I begged my mom for a perm, so that's how I got it on the natural hair journey. And I had, I have never looked back and I will never go back to the creamy crack. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it, that's your preference. For me, it just, I love my natural hair. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Enjoy the journey. The second thing is don't compare your hair to other people. We are all beautiful in our own unique way, and that is about our hair as well. Honestly, I don't really know what my hair type is. I've never really given it a whole lot of thought. I think 
um, a 3C in the front and maybe a 4A on the sides. My hair isn't coarse. Um, I don't really know. I honestly don't care because at the end of the day, all hair is beautiful. Whether it's kinky, whether it's coarse, whether it's cottony, whether it's long, whether it's short. If it is healthy, it is beautiful hair. And I had to realize when I first started the journey because I was like a lot of people. I thought, oh, my hair kind of looks like hers. And if she's using this product, I should use that product also because my hair looks like hers. Well, it doesn't necessarily work that way because we are also dealing with hormones. We're dealing with hereditary and genetics. We're dealing with different temperatures, different at, you know atmospheric pressures, wherever you may be, different levels of humidity, barometric pressures. So many different things are different. The water, you could be using hard water. You could have a lot more chemicals in the water that you're using than someone else. So love your hair for what it is. Love the coarseness, love the cottoniness of it, love the density of it, love the porosity level of it. Love everything about your hair. And I promise you, the moment you say, I love this hair that is sprouting out of my beautiful head, you will start to treat your hair differently. You'll be kinder to it. You'll be more gentle with it. You'll pay more attention to it. You will find that your hair will take on a totally different life because now it's free. And it's funny when you say that because your hair is dead, but think about it. If you can change the way your life is by changing your thought process, how much more can you change something as simple as the way your hair looks? Because when you change the way you think about your hair, your hair takes on a totally different look and it becomes beautiful. It's no longer coarse or kinky or whatever it is that you define that's not in a positive light about your hair. And I'll give you a perfect example. My hair tangles very, very easily. I have a lot of strands of hair. My hair, I can detangle it, put it in twist, and it's in different sections. When I take my hair down to style it, it is tangled again. That used to drive me crazy. And I would get on YouTube and I would look at other videos of people whose hair that was similar to mine. And I'd be like, but her hair isn't tangling up. And how does she keep her hair so straight? And I would be so frustrated with my hair. And then it dawned on me one day was like, why are you so frustrated with your hair? Your hair is doing its own thing. It's supposed to be different from someone else's. You are wonderfully and uniquely made in his image. So we're supposed to be different. And that's when it clicked for me. And I think I finally got that lesson of not comparing my hair to someone else's. Probably my second or third year into the journey. So it didn't happen overnight. It, it took a little bit of time. Don't compare your hair to other people's hair. Just love the beautiful hair that is growing out of your scalp. Treat it kindly, love on it, and I promise you, your journey will be so much different. The third thing that worked for me, especially in the first two to three years of my journey was I actually diaried about my hair. And it taught me so much about what my hair liked and what it didn't like. So for instance, I had products for days. But once I realized that even though I had all of those products, I needed to learn how my hair reacted to those products so that I could keep it soft, so that I can make sure the moisture was balanced with the protein, so that I could minimize any breakage, so I could maximize the growth and keep my scalp healthy and make sure that the oldest part of my hair stayed on my head. And I think I learned about diarying on maybe one of the forums. And it was like, duh, why hadn't I thought about that? Make sure you keep a diary or a journal about your hair. And the way to make that successful for you is to minimize the number of products that you are using on your hair at any one time. Because if you use too many products on your hair, you don't know what product is making your hair do what. For instance, my hair 
did not like olive oil and shea butter. I know everybody's hair loves olive oil and shea butter. I realized that I could re poop with olive oil, but my hair didn't like it. And I also learned that I had low porosity hair, which was another reason why it was so hard for me to infuse the moisture into my hair. But I wouldn't have figured that out had I not been journaling and writing things out about how my hair reacted to olive oil. The olive oil basically just sat on my hair just like the shea butter. It never penetrated. Even though I deep conditioned every week with the heat. I also used henna for a long time, probably for three years. And my hair loved henna. I learned that my hair did not like shea butter. I bought the shea butter, got on that shea butter wagon like everybody else, got my African shea butter. And my hair was like, I don't know what you think you're doing, but I don't, I don't like that. My hair, it didn't shine with shea butter. It did not gel with shea butter. It was hard with shea butter. It was a nightmare. And I learned that my hair could tolerate shea butter as long as it was not the first ingredient, but it had to be the third, fourth, or fifth ingredient in the product or somewhere in there, but it could not be the main ingredient. And it's funny because today, my hair loves the main choices, doesn't get much butter than this. Basically, that's pretty much all I use on my hair once I shampoo. So, journal diary about the products and how your hair reacts to them so that you understand what your hair likes and doesn't like and how to utilize various products for your hair. When to use them. Is your hair protein sensitive? If you're using coconut oil, which has protein in it, you can't use it, but you won't know if you're mixing it with a concoction of castor oil and olive oil and all these different things. So just use one or two products at a time to help you understand your hair. That was like the deal breaker for my hair <laughs> once I got past the comparison and, and not making it harder than it had to be. Tip number four is pay attention to your hair. Don't listen to all of the rules that are out there about natural hair. Again, tip number four, the rules are not etched in stone. Your hair should dictate what you do for your hair, not the rules of the natural hair journey. When I started this journey, I was natural everything. No sulfates, no cones, all natural products, the oils. I was buying the Owen Handmade. I was buying everything natural for my hair. I was using henna. Um, I was using indigo to dye my hair. I was 100% all natural. Now my hair did well. I never had any real issues with my hair. I did learn through the process that my hair loved protein. Never knew that my hair loved protein when I had a perm. I never got any protein treatments. So it was really strange that when I went natural, my hair loved protein treatments. But it also let me know that eggs, mayonnaise, avocado, coconut oil, that was a baby treatment. That was like, okay, thank you. I appreciate you giving me a little bit of protein, but I need some different kind of protein. I realized after keeping a diary, and paying attention to my hair, I learned that it loved hair mayonnaise protein treatment. Go figure. Now, most people, if you listen, listen to the rules in the natural hair industry, it is use nothing but natural products. Well, my hair was not really feeling that. It was like, okay, I need something more. Now, I never used a protein treatment like an Apogee or anything. It didn't need that strong of a treatment, but it did perform well with the hair mayonnaise. And I can't remember who the, the maker of it, is, of it, but I'll make sure I put it in the description box for you. But it loves that. So even now, after so many years, 
probably every two months, I use the hair mayonnaise in my hair to give it that infusion of protein that it loves. Rules are made to be broken in this. Learn your hair. Another thing that I learned about my hair by paying attention to my hair and just doing away with the rules was that my hair actually liked sulfates and cones. Go figure. I was using nothing but all natural shampoos. And again, it did well, it was clean, it grew, but I realized my hair was hard until I put a conditioner in when I was using the no sulfate shampoos, no cones. And I don't know what happened. I think one day I must have ran out of shampoo or I just wanted to test to see how my hair was gonna react with, I think it was Suave Hello Hydration Shampoo, I think it was, yeah, I think that's exactly what it was. And my hair was like, it just, I'm sorry, that was kind of, that's exactly what my hair did though. It was so happy. And even though my hair doesn't really like shampoo, it tangles up quite a bit with shampoo. I still have to clarify, so I do use a shampoo. But I learned that my hair liked sulfates and cones. And my hair did a totally different change once I realized that my hair wasn't as hard after I shampooed it. It was actually softer. It didn't it didn't tangle as much. It still did tangle after shampoo. It's just something about shampoo in my hair. I haven't figured it out to this day and I don't really give it a whole lot of thought. I just do what I need to do. Yes, the rules are meant to be broken. They are not etched in stone. If your hair is telling you it needs this, you give your hair what it needs, regardless of what the community says out there. Because again, you have to listen to your hair in order for you to have that healthy hair journey that you're looking for. Number five, and we all have done this, we've stressed out over growing our hair instead of focusing on what's really important. That's a healthy scalp and healthy hair growth with as minimal breakage as possible. If you can really focus on the health of your hair and your scalp, the growth will come. I promise you. I remember my aunt years and years and years ago, she stressed out about her hair so much. Now at that time she had a perm, but she taught me something in watching her. She stressed out about her hair so much that her hair was coming out. It was shedding. It was breaking. And she was so concerned about it. I'm not sure who told her, but they were like, you know what? You're breaking your hair off, making your hair problem worse because you are stressing about it. And you're putting that stress on your body. And your hair, your skin, your scalp is part of, is the biggest organ, your skin, if you think about it. So when you're putting that stress on yourself to have this hair growth that is probably not realistic because the average person, and that's the average person, only gets a half an inch of hair growth each month. Personally, my hair grows slow. I do not, I don't ever recall getting half an inch of hair growth. I probably got a quarter inch of hair growth throughout my entire journey. I've always had hair, so I really wasn't stressing about it. But I will say in the beginning, I was watching so many YouTube videos and watching other people and seeing their hair grow like, you know, weeds and my hair was growing so slow, I was trying wild growth hair oil, I believe it was. I was massaging my scalp and nothing's wrong with massaging your scalp. It needs to be massaged to stimulate the follicles and stimulate growth and it's a wonderful practice. But do it because it's good for your scalp and your hair, not for the actual growth that can occur because of it. So if it's about the health, again, if, the, if it's healthy, the growth will come. And also keep in mind that everybody doesn't get the astronomical lengths that some people get because we are pre- destined, if you will, to some degree, to have a certain length of hair based on genetics, heredity, and so forth and so on. So we may not necessarily have the growth that another person has. We may not get to tailbone. We may get to bra strap length or waist length or whatever it is. But as long as it's healthy hair, we should be as excited about that as if we have tailbone length hair. 
Now that's my goal is tailbone length. Now will I get there? I have no idea. I don't know anyone in my family that's ever had tailbone length hair, but I would certainly like to get there. My hair now is right at my waist when I straighten it, which I only straighten it every maybe twice a year to trim the ends. The last time I straightened it was in October. So it's, it's very deceiving. somewhere down there but it's very deceiving and I love that because people never have a clue how much hair you really have on your head I think I like that about being natural because people look at your hair and it's shrunken and you just never know how much hair a person really has or how long it is so those are my five tips for enjoying your natural hair journey and bringing forth a wonderful head of hair, your crown and glory, and loving it, having fun with it. If you're on the journey and these tips have helped you or you've heard them before or you've had some difficulties, I would love to hear your comments below. Tell me a little bit about your journey. Tell me what's worked for you, what didn't work for you. It's really interesting to hear everyone's comments about the journey because everybody's journey is different. But if I can give you one piece of information that can help make that journey just a little bit easier. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what in the heaven brown Jennings are you waiting on? You need to be a part of the Chic Classy Spicy family. So hit the subscribe button. It's either right here or it's right here. And if you haven't checked out some of our other videos, there have been some suggestions right there or maybe right there. can't remember where it is. <laughs> but check out some of our other videos. There's been spring hauls and all sorts of other things. So and make sure you hit the notification button so you'll know when our new videos are uploaded. If you're a current subscriber, thank you again so much for your continued support. And remember to thumbs up, share the videos, and don't forget to follow us on our other social media platforms. That's where you're gonna see what's really going on in my life. You're also gonna see information about various outfits that I've been wearing, just a little bit of other stuff that I don't necessarily always put on YouTube. So our handle is really simple, at Chic Classy Spicy, all one word. And we're on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and Facebook. Thank you so much for joining me. And until the next time, keep it chic, classy, spicy.